This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Well, aloha. How you doing? Gordo the Tech Star here. Welcome to a wonderful and exciting episode of Hibachi Talk. This is going to be an interesting one today because we're going to talk a little bit about politics. And I normally don't talk politics per se, and I don't endorse candidates, but I'm inviting every candidate running for any office. If they want to come on the show, please do, and we can get to know you a little bit better and, and so on. So I have Natalie Iwasa here. Natalie's a CPA. She's also a CFE, and that's a certified fraud examiner. Yes. So you've also got that as your background. And you're going to be running um, for City Council District 4, your candidate there. Yes. So, and I've known you for a number of years because I used to live in Hawaii Kai and so on. And you were, one of the things I've always appreciated about you is you're always active in the neighborhood board. You're also known as the bike mom. Um, you're very active in City Council. Um, when I was, you know, with the Hadam administration, um, I actually was one of the few, I think, few, notice I say few, that looked forward to you coming in because you had, you had your facts and your figures and everything in order and you were bringing up points with the facts. There was not emotion into this thing, it was just facts and figures. So I appreciate the fact that you've agreed to come on this show. Thank you for having me. This is going to be fun. So um, we're going to talk about transparency in government and fiscal, fiscal responsibility, which is like... Tell me about it. Um, is that really true? <laughs> uh, but let's first let's get a little background on yourself. You're a CPA, CFE. So just like, well, where did you grow up? Well, I'm from Wisconsin. Okay. I've been in Hawaii for over 30 years. Lived well. in Hawaii Kai with my husband for about 30 years. Have two teenage boys. Okay. And I've been very active in the community and at the city council, state legislature as, as well. Yeah, you're everywhere. I mean, every time <laughs> I turn around, you're looking, you're doing this kind of stuff. So so let's let's talk about. So why are you? Let's, we'll get into this. So why are you running for city council? Why would you want to do something as crazy as that? <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it is really pretty crazy. And um, the first thing I had to do was make sure that it was okay with my family because mm -hmm. there's so much involved in it. But, you know, I've paid attention to what's been going on at City Council and, and within the city for at least a decade now. Yeah. And there are so many things going on that um, I think are not done correctly or for the benefit of the people actually in general. Mm -hmm. And so I believe with my background and my um, activities in the in the communities I can actually um, improve things yeah you bring you bring 10 years of experience yes. uh, yeah even though you haven't been on City Council I mean you've been there enough that you bring 10 years of experience to the to the table so you're gonna this is but this is your second try where right? you've done it you tried once before yes you got close yeah I actually I did pretty pretty well for having not very much money 22 percent of the vote and um, that was Actually, I thought pretty good, and not knowing what is involved. Yeah, and not knowing what all is involved to campaign and so on. But you're taking a kind of a, 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 an approach that I like. You know, you're doing some things that are that are unique, and I'm going to bring it up just because we've talked about it, sign waving. Okay, oh. just the <laughs> sign waving situation. So okay. you know, and, and so you've been asking. I'll put it you've, you've been asking your constituents what you think about sign waving. I have a comment I'm going to add to you too. I bet that I didn't post on your Facebook, but I'll, so so what's your thought on this? Well, um, I've been advocating for uh, safe roadways for everybody right. for over a decade. And, you know, sign waving is inherently dangerous. I mean, it's, uh, we're out there saying, hey, look at me, here I am. Right. And, you know, we have a lot of distractions already with people texting. So um, I just, I, I won't be doing it. Yeah, I, not, I, you know what, and I appreciate your position on that. And I, I can tell you one time, uh, sign waving, while I was sign waving, for uh, someone who was, gonna, who was running for office, I saw a bus hit a light pole. Oh. Yeah, you know, the mayor on a bus hit a light pole because he got distracted looking at everybody that was sign waving. Right. So, and what I have discovered on my inside side, sign waving is not so much, in my opinion, for whatever it's worth, it's not so much for the benefit of the candidate. It's the candidates competing with, we, with each other to see how can get the most people out sign waving. That's really what it's really become. It's become the sign waving wars, in my opinion. No one's, it's not, you know, name recognition and so on. It's the candidates, you know, saying, well, I got 100 people out, you only got 40. Well, you know, as far as that goes, I've also heard that people pay for people to stand out on I've the sidewalk. I've heard that too. And it's just, it's not a good thing. Okay. So anyway, we, we, we beat that one to death <laughs> and we'll come back. So, you know, so you, you've um, been involved in the community. Um, do you have a particular platform that you're going to be advocating or pushing for or such? Yeah, so, you know, we always talk about platform, right? But yeah. I'd kind of like to step back just a little bit and talk about a foundation. Okay. Um, and that is, uh, back in 1958, the U.S. Congress passed a code of ethics. 
And that is going to be my foundation. It's, it's pretty much the way I've operated already anyway. Mm -hmm. But um, I feel it's really important for people to understand that that's where I'm coming from. Um, you know, it, it includes things like um, just doing the right thing. You know, it, um, no paid pay to play kind of stuff. Right. Um, all those things that people say, you know, wait a minute, why are they doing that? That's not right. Um, so that's, that's where I'm starting from. But my platform then uh, is several things. Um, and I think you've, you're probably aware, anybody who's been out there reading the papers is uh, aware that affordable housing, homeless, those are big issues. Right. Infrastructure, you know, even though we've been, been paying about $100 million a year to repave our roads, mm -hmm. there are many that are still potholed. And then along with that is the sewer and um, water main replacement that we have. Right. We've got a lot that has to be done in that area. And uh, you touched on government transparency, good good governance, as well as money. Yeah, money. So and those are my big issues. And yeah, and you bring some good talent to the table with your CPA background and the CFE background, which I think you know the, the fraud examiner piece is going to be a nice piece for you to to get when you and you're looking at the budget. So and we we've, we've been looking at the budget you know for over the years. Now I will say on a transparency side, I will give the Hanneman credit for the, the transparency side. Mm -hmm. Up until his reign. Rain. Up to when he was the mayor, um, the budget was never published online, mm -hmm. and so under his under his um, mandate, we ended up publishing the the budgets online, and and that has continued. I think once it gets up there, it's hard to stop it. Right. Not necessarily everybody's looking at it, but the budget is there. So for the viewers, if you want to, just go to Hon City and County of Honolulu budget, and it will come up, and you can get right to the website, and you can get every bit of detail from every department. Right. And, and you can see the increases and what's going on. Um, and I have to tell you about one that just blew me away for, from last year. So anyway, so let's talk about this year's budget. And, and Ray, um, you can pop up a slide. I think we have a slide on the 2019 um, operating budget, which is proposed at 2.81. That's 18. So let's stay here. We'll stay at 18. We'll come to 19. Sure. The surprise will come in a minute. <laughs> so this was fiscal year proposed in um, operating budget in 2018. 2.45 billion, and when you look, and that was adopted, and a 5.1 percent increase. I'd like to get a 5.1 percent increase in my <laughs> social security every year. That'd be kind of nice. <laughs> That'd be terrific, and uh, yeah, the contributions. So, and the, and the capital improvement budget is another is uh, approximately 956 million. Now, a lot of those dollars come from different federal funds and all the other kinds of things, but the operating budget comes from you know, essentially our property tax. A lot of it. Most of it, in fact, yes. And other fees and things. And other fees that come, and come yeah. into it. So, um, nine or, what is it? 900? Let me look at that. <laughs> it just, oh, billion. I, that's what I always like to tell you. It says 2.45 billion. Right. So I try to give people a, to reflect back on what's the difference between a million and a billion? Because everybody have a hard time. So there here's three more zeros. Three on more the zeros end. on the end, right? <laughs> Lots more zeros on the end. So a, a, a million seconds is 12 days. And a billion seconds is 32 years. So when you're looking at this, this is not millions as in 12 days. This is B as in billions as in two years. Essentially, one lifetime. Mm -hmm. It's one lifetime is what we've got here as the amount of this budget in this city. And it keeps growing. And it keeps growing. And, it cre and I don't see any desire to uh, lower it. Right. And, and, you know, I think that's been one of my frustrations is we keep filling the budget to match the assessed values and the increases in the real property taxes, rather than looking at, well, where can we cut money? And not really, you know, cut programs, right. but just cut smartly so that we're not wasting money. Yeah, and, that, and um, I think there's, you know, I don't want to get too much into it, but there's, there's some departments that um, are redundant. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why we have some of the redundancies. Uh, in there other than we're just filling seats. And we've seen the audits where they've got departments at the state anyway that are sitting around, they can't, this auditor can't understand what it is they're doing. Right. So, you know, one of the things that was um, implemented by uh, Caldwell under uh, City Managing Director Amber Shin was this uh, zero-based budgeting. So rather than taking the last year's budget and then adding a percent for right. everybody, they start at zero and then they are supposed to justify every, every piece that they put in there. And I think that we should be doing that with the employees as well because that's like a significant portion of the budget. And 
um, you know, maybe what we need is more people over in this department and fewer over here. And I think something like that, if we did it that way, it would bring that out. Yeah, I, I, and I, I agree. I remember at one point when every department had their own accounting person. But then oh. at, um, um, at one point, the accounting got consolidated, reduced the number of individuals in there. There was pluses and minus that. I remember when we built a motor pool, took all the cars away from the departments and mm -hmm. created a motor pool, reduced the car count significantly along with the costs. So there's all kinds of opportunities sitting out there, but I don't see any movement in that space. No, and I haven't either. And, and in fact, it's, it's been, um, what I've seen is a lot of inserting by the council members of projects that are in their area and um, some things that are just, it, it's not right. For example, they, for a while they were putting grants, line iteming grants in there and, you know, um, they're buried, so people out in the public really don't see that. The news doesn't generally pick it nope. up, and so uh, that's just one of the policies that was not good. Yeah, and the, and the and you know, even though the budget's out there, the volume of documentation surrounding it is onerous, and so no, a lot of people aren't going to spend the, the right. time going through all of it. Right. I'd certainly encourage people to read the executive summary, at least just read the executive summary, right. and then look at a couple of the graphs and we'll, we'll, we'll let's pop up one of the graphs now we'll pop up what the 2018 I think I have up there will show you the um, this is the 2018 operating budget and the the resources were so this is um, this is where we get the money so you can see at real property tax you nailed it right 35% right. of it's coming from real property tax and the rest are from a whole number of different fee different fees and like but the other one that always intrigues me is carryover Right. So what that is, is that's, it's about $100 million and it's been sitting in there year after year. And if you remember from the, um, when this surcharge extension came up, it was a question by some of the uh, legislators. Right. Because it means that money was set aside and budgeted, but not used. Right. And that happens year after year after year. And so if we have that money sitting there, it means that there's some place where we can cut. Right. So here, and you said it, zero base budgeting. If, zero, if if we're truly doing zero base budgeting, wouldn't that go away? Yes. I but it's not going. Guess what? 2019 slide still has it in it. I haven't seen the 19. Well, I'm going to surprise yet. you okay, with it, right? Thank you. So we're going to take we're going to take a, a little short break. We take a little short break to sure. pay some bills, do a commercial. We'll come back and we'll talk about 2019, and then um, some more things on how we can help uh, manage this budget. Thank you. We'll be back in a minute. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff, MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. Hello, I'm Helen Dora Hyden, the host of Voice of the Veteran, seen here live every Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. As a fellow veteran and veterans advocate with over 23 years experience serving veterans, active duty, and family members, I hope to educate everyone on benefits and accessibility services by inviting professionals in the field to appear on the show. In addition, I hope to plan on inviting guest veterans to talk about their concerns and possibly offer solutions. As we navigate and work together through issues, we can all benefit. Please join me every Thursday at 1 p.m. for the Voice of the Veteran. Aloha. Aloha. Gordo the Tech Star here. Welcome to another exciting and thrilling episode of Hibachi Talk Part 2. I have Natalie Iwasa here. She's uh, running for City Council District 4, yes. which is Waikai. All the way through Waikiki up to Kewalo Basin. Oh, so that was uh, Charles DeJoux at one point. Yes. Yeah, okay. Oh, so you, that's, yeah, and it's... um. Uh, What's Ryan? What's, I'm trying to remember the city council. Who's the current Trevor income? Ozawa. Trevor Ozawa. Trevor Okay, so he's he's in that spot too. So is he running? Uh, I. Or is he, he term not. limited out? No, he's not. Okay, so you got many candidates? Uh, you you have pulled papers. Pull, pull papers. I think I'm the only one who's filed so There's far. Only filed so far. Okay, yeah. well, good, good 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 get you out there front. So we're talking about transparency in government, you know, fiscal accountability, and so on. 
And before we left, we talked about zero-based budgeting, which mm -hmm. you think is a great thing, which I do too. And um, so um, 2018, they had 20 some odd percent of the budget was carryover. Right. So what do we got in 2019? Can we pop up the slide? I want to see what's in carryover. And I don't see carryover. Yet we have a two well, point. Well, this is um, 2018 expenditures. So oh, that's the, that's the expenditures. Oh, I don't know. Uh, okay, that's, that's the expenditures. Yeah, that's the current fiscal that's year. That's the current fiscal year expenditures, yes. Okay. I'm sorry I missed it. Do you happen to know what that was by any chance? Regardless, they're going to use it again. Well, yeah, they've, I mean, carried it over um, year after year. And so um, he must be cutting stuff somewhere to have that carry over. Right. So, with t so a, a, we go zero pace budgeting and you have a 20% 20, 20 of your budget approximately is carry over from the previous year. You start at zero, that goes back into the general fund, mm -hmm. or if they're from different funds, whatever fund they go into, right. and we start again. Yeah. Okay, I, do we have to pass a legis piece of legislation to make that happen? I think we just ha have to have good people in the council who are willing to make that change happen on the, you know, when they adopt it. When they adopt it. I think, I think it would be an excellent idea, especially when you look at 40% of the operating budget doesn't provide any services to the public. By that I mean our debt service mm -hmm. and um, retirement funds. The funding of all that, that's, that's about 40% of the operating budget. Yeah, it, well, the retirement and, and um, fringe benefits are huge, and we have a huge um, unfunded liability out there, too, so yeah. we really need to, to watch what we're doing with the budget. Yeah, I think our unfunded liability is like $14 billion or something like it's that. It's a lot Some of money. <laughs> astronomical amount of money. So, so how are you going to get everybody to nudge along in, 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 with this when you get into the seat? You know, um, people ask me, well, you're just one person. How can you make a change? And I think part of it is just education. You know, um, there are things in here like the uh, payroll taxes where if you don't understand how it works, you really are in no position to say, well, that really should be cut. And I've said time after time again that the FICA is overstated in there. So part of it, I think, is education. Um, part of it is also making the... Um, public aware that they should be concerned about this because it impacts them either directly or indirectly depending on what is right. what is being spent. Um, and then also I think, you know, uh, I know people, there's, there's a lot of compromise that's involved and mm -hmm. I am open, I listen to people, so I think that's an important characteristic and um, trying to make sure that things are done properly. So those are some of the things that I would try right. to do. So you know, one of the things I, was, um, I had mentioned to you earlier is that you know, there's, there's programs that some governments have done called spend management, where they bring in, they go, issue an RFP, they bring in third parties to look at various departments and how yes. they're spending their money. Um, I'd love to get rid of this use it or lose it mentality. And that's what's there. That's why we have the carryover, this part, because people say, well, I budgeted it last year and I don't want to, I either got to spend it mm -hmm. or I'm going to uh, lose it next year. Right. Well, how about the fact that you're going to lose it next year anyway? If you don't, if, if you budget for it and you can't deliver on what you said you're going to do, then and, and not, we're not blaming you, but don't expect it to carry over into your department for the next year. Yeah, so one of the things I wanted to look at, first of all, I think that, um, that RFP that you mentioned, having a company come in and actually look at what is being spent and how things can be done more efficiently is, is definitely worth taking a look at. But... Um, I just lost my train of thought. Been there, done that. <laughs> <laughs> I do it all the time. You should be my age. <laughs> Shoot. So, okay, so, so we come back to the, to the fact that the, the, the spending is there. And I've got to bring up something, and I, um, I should have put the slide up, but last year in 2018, one of the departments, um, one of their administrative levels, had eight employees in it. Their salary budget doubled. Oh, doubled the same number of people and it was a budget issue yeah no kidding so how can that happen you know that's a good question just the because the the budget is divided into salary and current expenses and the current expenses is supplies equipment that kind right. of thing and so you're saying the salary the portion? salary portion of that budget doubled it went up nine hundred thousand dollars for eight people went up 
Wow. I know. And I thought, this got to be a typo. I mean, it has to be a typo. It can't be right. I mean, there must have been something wrong. Yeah, Just, something yeah, doesn't so. sound right there. That's why I didn't put it up. I said, it's got to be an error that was in there. But if it's not, and I look at 2019, which just came out, and I haven't looked at the detail, if that's in there with the new rate, then I'm like, wow. Yeah, that's, that's something that would really need to be looked at. And, you know, there are other things in there. Um, and I think it's really important for people to understand when they do things like vote on charter amendments, what the implication of that mm -hmm. is. For example, we had the um, Office of Climate Change uh, yeah. and then the new land management department, right? So when the climate change um, office was discussed, they said, oh, we're going to have a grant that will fund that. And so I actually looked at um, the office on housing, which had two people, and I said, okay, well, let's, let's talk about the cost because it is, we're going to pay for it at some point. And so I was thinking it would be about a half a million dollars. Um, well, so we found out afterward the grant covers the executive director only for two years, and they staffed it with six people. Yeah. So, you know, we're looking at a huge amount of cost that voters, I don't think, knew about. And, and I was there, and I certainly didn't know about it. And then on the land management side, um, the idea was to pull people from the different departments because it had been kind of separated, and so to make it more efficient, pull from different departments and make a new land management um, department that would control all of the uh, city lands. So we were talking about, um, I guess, nine people. Well, the current budget, I, if I counted correct, um, has tw is 28, 28. 28 that's, positions. That's a little larger than nine. Yeah, and two, $2 million for that. So, um, you know, with the increase every year, this is going to carry on now. And we can't keep doing this. We can't keep adding people. <laughs> we can't keep adding people. And here's the thing to remember. These people will retire. And then these people will then be entitled to their retirement benefits. Right. right? That's going to be added to that continuing grow, continuing to grow pot. Right. So, yeah, so you, you, you've nailed it. And, and, and you talk about the, um, um, what's that department? Environmental? Environmental services. Services. Um, and all the different departments. I mean, there's like... When it comes to um, global warming of this uh, global warming, we have like now between the state and the city like four or five different agencies, and I'm still trying. And one of them, the state one, got nailed because they did said they couldn't know what they've done in a year, oh. and they've got a dozen people in there, eight to twelve people. And the auditor came in. There's no plan, no program, knows nothing. But there's there's a bunch of people there sitting there. Do I don't have, we don't have what? So I agree with you. We should be looking at where are all these FTEs going and where are they yeah. and what are they doing? I mean. I, I had a bunch of spares when I came into the city, and I never filled them. Mm. We moved people around. Yeah, so, you know, it, it tells us what the priorities are, um, because if you look at the Ethics Commission, they are funded for six people, and they've had a backlog for years. Yep. And I think that's one of our most important departments, because, mm. you know, they handle um, people who might be at taking advantage of their position or um, the lobbyists, you know, so... Um, they're really important, in my opinion, but we have more people in the Office of Climate Change. And yeah, so, so more people in the Office of Climate Change than, than ethics. You just nailed it. <laughs> That's the issue. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so one of the things I've actually asked the mayor to do is, is expand the hotline. I guess there's an integrity hotline that's mm -hmm. within the city, so only city employees know about it, and I think it's only open from like 7 to 4 p.m., and we really need to expand that to 24 hours a day. People be able to have to be able to report anonymously. We have to have confidence that those uh, any reports are going to be followed right. up on. And this is actually really cheap, relatively speaking, these days to do this um, because it's become such an uh, an important issue, not just here but across the U.S. Oh yeah, the game, the, the the ethics department. When Chuck Toto was in charge of the ethics department, I really like that man. I tell yeah. you, every time I had to do, I wanted to do something, I sent him an email or a letter. I said, okay, I want to do this, and he'd come back and he'd say, here's your pluses, here's your minuses, and I would go, if I were, if you were me, what would you do? And he'd say, well, I wouldn't do that, but right. I'd be okay this. And I said, okay, fine, then that's exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah. And um, I met with him every year for just a refresher, uh -huh. just 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 to stay on top of it because it gets kind of complicated. Yeah, it can, especially when we're such a small island we know a lot of people we have a lot of different relationships and right. so we need to be careful about those conflicts that might come up yeah we have the one degree of one degree of separation yeah. speaking of losing your train of thought I had an idea and it just went <laughs> right out right out of right out of my head I was gonna ask you about a particular thing 
So what else have you got this year that's been, been um, uh, keeping you up at night? <laughs> well, so um, we didn't talk too much about the capital improvement budget, but okay. um, it's been in the news. The, um, there's $44 million in there for rail operations. Now, this is similar to if you or I put our groceries on our mortgage. You know, it's not good policy. So that really needs to be taken out of there. Um, and then with respect to the rail budgets themselves, we have, again, looking at what our priorities are based on what is being funded, um, seven people in public relations. Yeah. Nobody in internal audit that I'm aware of. Wow. So, you know, um, we have lots of people out there pumping out the information. We got our picture of the week. We got this nice meeting going on out in Aina Haina at the library. <laughs> Uh, they did cut out the coloring books, but still we have a lot of this stuff where um, we really need to cut that out because um, we're not getting good information to begin with. Right. And we need somebody who can look inside each of these areas in, in the rail, look in, at those contracts. And in some of the cases, the contracts were not done in our best interest, and that's why we have these massive change orders now. Um, but I know the state auditor is looking at some of that, and I'd be very interested in finding, yes. you know, hearing what he has um, found out because the legislature gave him some great latitude in what he can do over there. But on an ongoing basis, we should still have somebody in internal audit in, uh, in looking at the procedures in heart and how they're doing things. Yeah, I think I, I think that's a great idea, and even if it isn't someone that's part of, I'd rather it be someone that's not part of the department, mm -hmm. right? Because then then they're still on the you know on the independent side, and right. they're ethically you know responsible for what they're what they're looking at. Oh no, I agree. You know, taking forty four million dollars of your operating budget and funding it with capital money, that's not smart. It's like running up your credit card. Exactly. Just keep, keep and then paying off just the monthly payments. Every and paying month. your minimal off every month. No, it just yeah. uh, it just doesn't it just doesn't work. It's not fiscally responsible. Yeah, I would love. Well, I would love someone to go in there and just do a massive audit on the spending and what what's happened in that space. We actually really need an investigation of rail and somebody who understands contracts who can also look at relationships and um, because you know there have been some pretty harsh accusations out there. Yeah. And so we need somebody to follow up on those kinds of things. Okay, so last thing, we're just, we, we, believe it or not, we burned through it all. Oh, we're out of time. Any last fast. message before we wrap this up? I just hope that people, you know, before they vote, will go out and take a look at the candidates mm -hmm. um, very thoroughly because we hear so many times that, oh, I, you know, my friend voted for this person just because they knew about them. And that's not really a very responsible way to... Yeah, learn your learn your candidates and, and, and get out to vote. I mean, our voter turnout is Well, that's terrible. another thing. It's yes. totally atrocious. But yeah, you please get out to vote. And if you if you complain about it and you didn't vote, then you know what? You deserve what you get. That's but not always my philosophy. Yeah. Natalie, thank you so much for being on the show. I wish you the best of luck. You're welcome, Gordon. We'll see as we get closer to the final days um, how things are turning out. Yes. And anyway, thank you all for watching Ibachi Talk. We'll be back here in a week, I hope. So we'll see what happens. And like I say at the end of every show, how you doing?